Flight 414 to Paris. Will all passengers on this flight please make their way to gate 29 and have their boarding cards ready? There you are, darling. Now don't forget, phone me. Now, how could I possibly forget? The same way you forgot last week and yes. the week before. I'm sorry, darling, but I've had the most frantic week. Thank you for the magazines. Oh, I'm particularly fascinated by pig farming. I'm sorry, I just grabbed the nearest one. I'm sure there's something else. Modern knitting. This is the final call for flight 414 to Paris. Uh, that's me. Do be careful, darling. I couldn't bear it if you crashed or anything. Thanks a lot. You must let me see him. You must. I'm sorry, miss. The doctor's with him now. But I'm his niece. Sorry. Can I help at all? Thank you, sir. But it's oh, it's my fine. uncle. Something's happened, but they won't let me see him. If you don't mind, sir, this is an official matter. Oh, but I'm fascinated by official matters. Oh. Oh, that isn't it, is it? It's a very good club, though. Um, would you hold that in my hand, please? There we are. I beg your pardon, sir. If you come this way. Thank you. Come along. We'll soon clear this out. Come on in. I'll get you a drink, Miss Blaine. How? It isn't possible. Yes, I know. Did he ever say where he spent the weekend? No. I only knew that he went away for the weekend and arrived at the airport at 9 o'clock on Monday. I can assure you he didn't take any flight on Friday. He certainly didn't arrive this morning. Then how do you account for him being in the middle of your runway? You're completely baffled. It's as if he appeared from nowhere. Pajamas and a dressing gown. Our security staff are looking into it, of course. 
but he was right on the other side of the airfield. It just isn't any way he could have got there. Miss Blaine, did your uncle ever say where he went, what flight he caught? No, and that's the reason I'm here, really. Reason? Yes, he's been very upset lately. Last week he begged me to meet him this morning. He, he said he could never remember where he'd been, only that he arrived on a flight at nine o'clock. Will Mr. Jason King please contact the departure desk immediately? Yes, of course. Hello. Oh, could I have the departure desk, please? Thank you. Oh, hello. Uh, Jason King speaking. I believe you wanted to have a word with me. Oh. It's waiting. I see. Uh, well, look, in that case, I think you better go without me. Well, it doesn't look as though it's going to show, Sir Curtis. Yes, pity. And I've got one of those dreadful working lunches in half an hour. Sullivan, I want this matter given full priority. This man has got to be found. His name is Franz Dreiker, a Viennese research scientist in the field of ultrasonics. Two months ago, he disappeared from laboratories in Stockholm. At first, it was a matter for local security. And then Interpol took over. By the time we were informed about it, all trace of him had vanished. Is it thought that he left under his own power? Well, we know he suffered from amnesia on two occasions. So naturally, there's the possibility he's lost his memory. In fact, this was the theory until quite recently. Why? What changed it? They ran a routine check on his research program. It seems Dreiker has perfected a system which makes all of the forms of brainwashing obsolete. What about the people he was working with? They must have known that two months ago. That we had to find out the hard way. Everyone in Dreiker's department had forgotten what they were working on. Well, that could give him quite an edge. Yes, or whoever he sells it to. Unless, of course, you find him first. Good luck. Thanks. We'll need it. How do you find somebody who can make people forget they've seen him? Auntie never forgets. Oh, it's a good idea. Listen, you better program her for amnesia cases and feed all the newswire copy in. And hope she doesn't get indigestion. <laughs> no, I wonder what happened to Jason. Perhaps he's forgotten he works for us. It was very nice of you to go to all this trouble. Wasn't it just? Thank you. The trouble is I'm enjoying myself so much that I'm inventing reasons to invite you out tonight. I better not. I'll have to contact Uncle's relatives. Yes, of course. You will allow me to drive you home. Now you're feeling a bit better, I'd like to hear more about your uncle. Did you see a doctor at all? I don't think so. He was managing director of quite a large finance company. I think he was afraid that rumors might start. I'm not surprised. Absent-minded financiers are not very popular. Shall we? All right. She's got company. You still haven't told me your interest. Oh, I'm addicted to damsels in distress. You're certainly not addicted to telling the truth. You've got a plane to catch, remember? Yes, so I have. Oh, do let me pop in for a moment. I just want to have a peep at your uncle's letter. All right. We waited all morning. Unfortunately, my services were required elsewhere. London Airport, as a matter of fact. Don't tell me. You had to talk down a superjet. No. That was yesterday. Come and take a look at this. He was killed on runway Bravo Charlie at Heathrow. Jason. 
nearly given you up. Feeding was mutual. Well, have you told him this girl? No. Soretz has lost a VIP scientist. We've got to find him. Dreiker. Franz Dreiker. Oh, yes. Now, he could have been an amnesia case. I'm beginning to feel more like a carrier pigeon every day. You to sound like one as well. If I hurry, I can catch the same flight back. Oh, I wonder if they've swapped stewardesses. Jason, we have a lot of work to do here. The man on the runway was an amnesia case, too. I think we've got our first lead. Now, what's he talking about? It probably has nothing to do with it. Delightful surprise. I beg your pardon. There's no need to. How do you do? My name is Jason King. Did you get my message? Oh, yes. Why the surprise? Well, finance companies are usually full of drab little people. You're definitely a move in the right direction. Almost progressive. You said you had some questions to ask about Mr. Blaine. First, which he took with him. I'm afraid I can't help you. But as his secretary, you must know where to reach him. A tiny phone number will do. But I'm not his secretary. She left about a week ago, and I'm just filling in. Very nicely, too. Could you give me your predecessor's name? I wish I could, but I never knew her. Mr. Blaine could have done, but he's... Out of reach. Well, thanks anyway. If you do find out, or feel like having that lunch I mentioned, here's my number. Oh, by the by... Has Susan Blaine popped in by any chance? Sorry. Susan, I've been looking for you everywhere. After all that trouble yesterday, I wonder whether you got away or not. I'm afraid you're mistaken. I've never seen you before. Certainly not yesterday. It's going to be a waste of time if we're wrong. Well, we've got nothing better to work on at the moment. Yeah, as I say, it's the only game in town. Are you sure that girl wasn't just giving you the elbow? Well, she said she'd never seen me before. Add that to her uncle's lapses and you've got quite a coincidence. It ties up with the people working with Dreyka. And the brainwashing angle. Yeah, but why Blaine? That's your problem. The secretary has already seen me. And she's not giving anything away. Are you sure you were asking for the right things? I'm sure she knows more than she's letting on. Anyway, I've got to concentrate on Susan. Life is tough. Burden we must all bear. I'll be in touch. Oh, give me a line, please. Susan Blaine? Oh, good. This is Jason King speaking. Yes? Oh, thank you. Miss Blaine, your uncle particularly asked me to look you up next time I was in town. Sullivan, I don't recall an appointment being made. Well, my New York office contacted your Mr. Blaine last week. I haven't flown all this way for the exercise, Miss... Uh... Crane. Thank you. Well, I'm afraid you have, Mr. Sullivan. You see, Mr. Blaine's dead. Dead? Oh, that's great. That's just great. This is definitely not my week. It wasn't exactly Mr. Blaine's either. You know, Miss Crane, I've got the idea you're my kind of secretary. Really? Well, let me put it this way. I'm about to start importing in a big way, and I mean big. Now, your boss was all set to talk a finance deal, industrial, commercial. He's dead, I'm dead. Unless there is some angel around who can pull the right strings. I'm afraid I lost my wings a long time ago, Mr. Sullivan. Don't worry about it, honey. We got a spare set in the car. <laughs> what uh, kind of strings? Well, uh, your company. It's uh, still in business, I suppose. Oh, yes. There'll be a meeting of the directors, and we should be back to normal in a couple of weeks. All right. You tell those directors here that my deal needs their approval fast, or I go elsewhere. That's almost as honest. And you've almost got the sweetest little sports car in town. Even if they don't approve? Oh, come on. I'm gilt-edged. And if you tell them Blaine had okayed me, well, they did think very highly of Mr. Blaine. 
You know, uh, about that sports car. There's a new model that's just come out. Well, let's have dinner tonight and pick out the best color to go with that hair of yours, huh? All right. Well, the meeting's tomorrow morning, so you better let me have those papers by tonight. They'll be ready. You don't waste much time for somebody who only arrived this morning. Strike first, honey. It's the only way to play. Oh, um, where do I pick you up? Oh. Oh, and uh, don't forget to bring a bottle. I never travel without one. inquiries, please. New York. Oh, hello. I'd like to make inquiries about a passenger arriving this morning from New York. Uh, Sullivan. Yes, that's right. Yes, the morning flight from New York. I see. Uh, is there any other flight he could have arrived on? Mm. Oh, well, thank you. <coughs> I had no idea that you were so impressive. Otherwise, I'd have made the trip sooner. Perhaps you did. I have the strangest feeling we've met before. Extraordinary. I do have that effect on people. It is odd, though. Even here. Some other life, perhaps. Were you and your uncle very close? Very. For the past month or so, I didn't see much of him. I, I think he was busy and worried about something. Somebody told me that you were actually here when it happened. No, I wasn't. I wasn't even in London. Oh. So you've no idea why he was here? None. And yet... I shouldn't keep on, really. Nonsense. I'm as interested as you are as to how he came on that runway. Runway? He's here, at the airport. Early flight. You don't remember? I seem to recall. Oh, it's ridiculous. I know I can't seem to remember what happened. But I must know, mustn't I? Not a worry. Sharp lack of sleep. I'm sure you didn't get much last night. Oh, yes, I think I did. At home? Home? Your apartment. Well, yes, I... I suppose so. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to go home now. I think I am rather tired. Of course. Thank you. Now, how did Blaine find a girl like you? I mean, he always struck me as such a dry old stick. I never mix business with pleasure. Uh, never? Well, there's always a first time. Before I forget what I originally came for, these are the papers. <laughs> Business before pleasure? It's always the best way. <laughs> I'll pour the champagne, and you can think about sports cars. somewhat of a surprise to you, but it's not exactly the kind of evening I had planned. No, Mr. Sullivan, I'm sure it wasn't. What's that supposed to mean? You don't have a New York office, and you've got your flight numbers all wrong. A smart girl. And aggressive, Mr. Sullivan. Don't forget that. Good night, Mr. Sullivan.
mind very much if I didn't ask you in. No, of course not. We'll have a good night's sleep. Call me in the morning. All right. Sleep well. I will. And thank you. This is Susan Blaine. Mr. King has just left. Yes. Yes, I understand. I thought you were going to bed. I was. I suddenly remembered something about my uncle. It had to do with the way he died. I had the strangest feeling that I was at the airport. And I remembered something very important. The place Uncle stayed at that weekend. Where was it? At a country club, not far from London Airport. It's called Westerly Grange. Susan, you're marvellous. I'll call you in the morning. Yes, uh, I wonder if you could fix me up with a room for the night. I've had a little trouble with my car. Well, we're a private club, sir. Our rooms are available only to members. Yes, I realize that. I saw it. Well, it is a bit late for me to get a room in London now. Couldn't you? Perhaps you could stretch a point, sir. Oh, that's very kind of you. Uh, number five. That's one of our quietest rooms. I think you'll be very comfortable there. Uh, have you any baggage, sir? It's in the boot. It's unlocked. Oh, very good. I'll have it sent up to you. Thank you, Mr. Carter, sir. I hope you'll sleep well. I'm sure I will, Mr. Carter. See you in the morning. Yes, sir. Good night. Uh, it's the first floor to the left. Thank you. Pleasant chap. Yes. You'll have to see he gets the very best attention. What's up with Andy this morning? Same as yesterday and the day before, and getting more absent-minded every minute. Good, good. Talking of yesterday, where were you? I tried Jason's hotel all day. Hmm? Yesterday? Why? Just see if you got a lead from Blaine's office. Blaine? Why should I have gotten a lead? But isn't that why you went up to London? Now, look, Annabelle, slow down a minute, will you? I mean, I know you're used to working with high-speed computers and all that, but have pity on me first thing in the morning. What is all this about London? Blaine! The man who died at the airport. Stuart, the Dreiker case. Dreiker. 
I think we got our wires crossed. I've never heard of the name Dreiker. And I don't know where you got this London idea. I haven't been there for weeks. Oh, that's marvelous. Wait till Auntie hears this one. She'll really blow her top. Annabelle, you haven't been overdoing this whole thing again, have you? Or have I just picked a dull morning? Stuart, you are working on the Dreiker case. In fact, you've just become part of it. I told you I'd never even heard of the name before. Morning. Morning. I've had the most diabolical flight. One hour over Orly because some transatlantic idiot was supposed to be short of fuel. Jason, Jason, will you please tell Stuart about the case we're working on? Yes, the moment I've had a decent cup of French coffee. Yeah, case? Do we have a case at the moment? No. No, we do not. Annabelle, you're sure you haven't gotten this confused with something else? D-R-E-I-K-E-R. Dreiker. I don't know the name. Sir? Well, that's very odd. Plain. And you wouldn't have gone through all this trouble just to... All right, so there is a case. Where are we? You both went up to London yesterday to follow up a lead that Jason had stumbled on. I find that hard to believe. I rarely stumble. Go on. You were supposed to check back. As usual, Jason forgot. And you, Stuart, left a message asking for a complete rundown on a firm of Gerald Blaine and Company, Industrial Finance. Blaine and Company. Well, sounds familiar, but that's all. Well, I did run a check on it. it. Seemed quite a reputable business until this morning. Finance. I went... I went there to arrange a deal. I met, I met this girl, uh, Laura, Louis, Lisa, that's it, Lisa. And Blaine was the man who was killed at the airport. Marvellous. Now, you said the company seemed all right. The directors had a meeting this morning and they put the company into voluntary liquidation. Apparently more than five million pounds has gone astray. No, 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 that's ridiculous because Blaine has been in business all his life. Now, where is it? They loaned the money on his instructions to a company that didn't even exist. And then Blaine died. Of amnesia. Well, at least we know how Dreyker is using his technique. But where? Now, don't look at me. Why not? Sometime last night you were both given the same treatment. Him. Blaine. Possible is the only answer. Can you remember anything about last night? A, a name, a face, a place? Blaine's niece, Susan. I've met her. Then we went somewhere. Why? Something she told me. She phoned me in my hotel. Something about... No. Complete blank. Stuart. Well, it's only that I met this girl, uh, Lisa. I took her out to dinner. No. I didn't take her out. So Lisa and Susan were the last people you saw? Might I point out with the best will in the world at this early hour of the morning, if I'm to be psychoanalyzed, I prefer it to be done privately, and certainly with a complete stranger. I'm not surprised. You wouldn't care to remember what you and Susan were talking about. No, I would not. You know, but you did say she'd forgotten she knew you. Yes, that's right. So they could have used her again to trap you? Hard to believe, but a possibility. Well, we've got trouble. If they can wipe out our memory any time we get close. It's not to mention a more permanent treatment. Yeah. What are you doing? Giving the problem to Auntie. Oh, I think we can manage without the assistance of that undersex overgrown adding machine. How? You can't remember where you went or who saw you, but they obviously know all about both of you. Blind man's buff. My favorite game. Really? I think the answer is quite simple. Really? We must allow them to trap one. What do you mean? It says Jason has a much better chance. Brilliant. Quite brilliant. Allow me. Getting ready to close shop? Yes. But how did you find me? Same way as before. Don't tell me you've forgotten. <laughs> no, no. I just thought you might have. I never forget a pretty face. Not to mention Mr. Blaine. I know there's something I should remember about him. I wondered if you could help me. Well, I'll try. I don't know whether it was you who told me or somebody else. Something about a place he visited at weekends. A place called... Furiating, isn't it? It's on the tip of my tongue. And you can't remember who told you? No, but I will. It's only a question of time. Unless it was you. Yes, it was me, Mr. King. Oh, thank heaven for that. What was the name? Westerly Grange. Of course. It's a sort of country club. Where did you say it was? Well, look, I've finished for the day. If you like, I'll take you there. How very kind of you. 
Is it far? No, it's just outside London. Have you got a car? Outside. Look, uh, I've just got to make a phone call. Uh, tell my flatmate I won't be in for dinner. Of course. I'll be waiting. Oh, straight ahead. Let's go. It's interesting the place is so near London Airport. Is it? It was where Blaine was killed. Well, I don't know if he was there last weekend, only that this was his club. Well, we'll soon find out. Yes. Oh, uh, take the next turning left. This entrance around the back. If I could get you, it has to be me. One glimpse of you, and they know Jason was faking. Well, naturally, I knew Mr. Blaine quite well by sight, sir. But whether he was here last weekend, uh... well, he must have registered, surely. Oh yes, but uh, I'm afraid our manager would have to look that up for you, sir. And he's having dinner at the moment. And we wouldn't want to disturb him, would we? Uh, perhaps you could have a drink in the bar and. I'll send him through to you as soon as he's free. That's a splendid idea. Thank you. Thank you. What are you going to have? Oh, a uh, martini dry, please. And uh, whiskey. Very quiet for a club of this kind. Not really, sir. Most of our residents are having dinner. Oh, then we'll join them, shall we? I'm afraid not, sir. The dining room is only open to members. What a curious arrangement. I'm sure Mr. Blaine wouldn't have stood for it. Exactly a swinging place, is it? No. You never did tell me how you knew where it was. Didn't I? Your martini, madam. Thank you. And yours, sir. Thank you. Here's to crime. And punishment. <laughs> Mr. Jason King? Yes? Telephone for you. Thank you. Hello.
Well, I was going to find out what Dreyker was doing and prevent him using his equipment. What do you know about this equipment? Well, very little. Except that it produces amnesia and probably some other effects. Stuart Sullivan, where is he? Outside, waiting for my signal. You know exactly where he is? No, but he can't be very far. He's probably in the woods. On the other side of your lawn? All right. Take Quince with you. And this time, kill Sullivan. What a splendid idea. Anything to oblige. Mr. Geek. Just make yourself comfortable. May I smoke? Unfortunately, no. You're going to take a brief nap. It will do you the world of good. Yes? Yeah? As a matter of fact, I am a, I'm a bit tired. Oh, that's right. He's all right now. I don't think we ought to risk sending him back again. Oh, don't again. worry. I know just the place to send Mr. King. Click these glasses, please. Certainly, madam. Where are the glasses? Well, Herschel. I've never seen her before. I only started today. Ask the manager. The manager doesn't hire staff. He does. No, no. Wait a minute. You never know what she might tell us.
having fun? Stacy's upstairs, quickly! Front striker, I presume. Where's the patient? It's the equipment. Now, what is it, Dracula? Ultrasonics? In simple terms, you could say that. It's a pity you couldn't think of a better way to use it. And an even greater pity you will not be here to see how versatile it can be. For what, Dracula? Getting people like Blaine to steal for you? A means to an end, Sullivan. To build my prototype will cost millions. But when it is finished, no one will be able to resist. Governments will fall, Sullivan. <laughs> What took you so long? I needed the exercise. Where's Jason? That's what Mr. Dreiker is just about to do. It's too late. Suppose you let me decide that. Get the headphones. Now, if I have to use your equipment on you, I might press all the wrong switches. <laughs> the transformer unit is destroyed. Well, that one looks all right. You care to try? No, 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 fine, fine. Switch one. No, 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 no. You have no control. Then talk. you were going? Paris. It's that away. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 